Oh, hallelujah. Anybody going through something? Don't raise your hand. Some will be lifting their feet in the air and stuff. Everybody's going through something. Amen? Welcome to the earth. <laughs> if you're not going through something, if you're not being tempted, maybe you're not worthy of being tempted. Hello. Maybe you're not an effect to the enemy. Praise be to God. First Peter chapter 4. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What things are happening to be alive, to see what's going on. Hallelujah. First Pete chapter 4. We are the generation that the prophetic word has been talking about. We are not only the generation of the Lord's return, but what God is raising up right now is what we call an unshakable generation. I think it was in the 50s or 40s or whatever, there was a group of individuals that were called the untouchables. You might have seen those movies when you were young. Well, when I was young, anyways. They were called the Untouchables. They were an, an organization of, they were taking down organized crime and stuff like that. These guys were, you know, they had machine guns. They, they, they were police officers. And God is raising up a generation right now of unshakable. Unshakable. That's why you see all kinds of stuff right now that's happening. It's an unshakable generation that is raising up right now to plow through and go forth and to relieve a remnant and prepare for the kingdom of Christ to be manifested on earth as it is in heaven. In 1 Peter chapter 4, in verse 7, would you read it with me? It says, but the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. It's not the end of all things that is just at hand. In other words, they, we, we are starting a new beginning. We are starting a new beginning in a new world with a new generation that is unshakable to the call, purpose, and destiny of the eternal kingdom. Unshakable. Verse 8. And above all things, have fervent love... For one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without what? Grumbling. As each one has a received a gift, minister to it one another as a good steward of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies that in all things God may be what? glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever and ever. Beloved, don't think it's strange concerning a fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. Welcome to the earth. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when he is glorified, when his glory is revealed, you also may be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and God rests upon you. On their part he is blasphemed, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, thief, or evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as a faithful creator. Again, the end of all things is at hand. Why? Because he started, there's a new beginning starting right now. There's a new world or, or a new world manifesting. And there's a new generation that is, again, unshakable to the call, unshakable to the purpose, 
and unshakable to the destiny of the eternal kingdom on earth. They are unshakable. And Isaiah chapter 60. Everyone say, we are the unshakable generation. We're being tested to maintain that position. Does everybody understand that? They are the unshakables. Isaiah 60. In verse 1, unshakable generation. This is a prophetic word for the unshakable generation. I want you to know that generation is not associated with age. It's associated with time. And we are in a time of a generation that is gathered together. It has nothing to do with age. So many times we look carnally at generations that have been handed down from family lines. But this is not what he's talking about. It's a generation that he's creating, not about age, not about anything else, but about time right now. And this is his prophetic release. He says what? Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will rise over you. And his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. Then you shall see and become radiant, and your heart shall swell with joy. Because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. The multitude of camels shall cover your land. And the dromedaries of Amidia and Ephah, of those from Sheba, shall come. They shall bring gold and incense. They shall proclaim the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together to you. And the rams of Nabathia shall minister to you. They shall ascend with acceptance on my altar. And I will glorify the house for, of my glory. Again, this is a prophetic word for the unshakable generation being released right now. In Psalm 43. What says Psalm, what, what did Isaiah say? Listen, you're going to be blessed. The wealth of the wicked is going to be released into your hands. You are all prosper and you will become a warrior. There's a testing and qualification for this generation of unshakables. That's why he's shaking. That's why things are shaking. Again, he wants to know what's your priority. How things are in divine order. Are you a seeker? Verse 1, Psalm 43. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust men. Let me tell you, this generation will get vindication. For you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off and why do I go mourning? Because of the oppression of the what? Enemy. Oh, send your what? Light and your truth. Did, it just, did he just say that his glory will shine upon us? Amen. Send your light and your truth and let them what? Lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. In other words, this is a part of the second wind that will be releasing more of revelation. More strategies, more provision. Because the first one is still exposing. Then verse 4. He says, And then I will go to the altar of God and to God my exceeding joy. And on the harp I will praise you, O God, my God. Wow. Vindication from God as he sends out his light and truth to guide the unshakables. To guide us. 
See, many people are rejecting it. Even though he sent his light and truth out. They're not, they're not accepting it. In Psalm 102. In verse 12, unshakable generation. Let's speak it. But you, O Lord, shall endure forever and the remembrance of your name to all generations. You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. For your servants take pleasure in your stones and show favor to her dust. So the nations shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth your glory. For the Lord shall build up Zion. He shall appear in his glory. He shall regard the prayer of the destitute and shall not despise their prayer. This will be written for the generation to come. That's this one right here. That a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. For he looked down from the height of his sanctuary. From heaven the Lord viewed the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoner. To release those appointed to death. To declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. When the peoples are gathered together and the kingdoms to serve the Lord. He shortened my days. I said, oh my God, do not take me away in the midst of my days. Your years are throughout all generations. Of old you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you endure. Yes, they will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will change them, and they shall be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. The children of your servants will continue, and your, their descendants will be established before you. Wow, a generation of worshipers that set the Lord in front of them. His presence is a priority. We are that generation of the unshakable generation. In Hebrews chapter 12. Everybody okay? Okay. Are you unshakable? The only thing we want to shake is in God's presence. That's when the anointing comes on so strong. Glory. Verse 25. Hebrews 12, 25. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made that the things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom, who's he talking about? An unshakable generation. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. A generation that hears and obeys the voice of the Lord. They maintain a level of self-denial and fear and reverence to God. They maintain a secure foundation. Again, they hear and obey the voice of the Lord. They maintain a level of self-denial and reverence, fear of God. And a secure foundation. And Proverbs 12. Verse 
Proverbs 12. Start out in verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge. And he who hates instruction is stupid. That's simple enough. I'm going to let that seep in a little bit. <laughs> we call them eternal or uh, temporary morons. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, and he who hates correction is stupid. A good, a, a good man obtains favor from the Lord, but a man of wicked intentions he will condemn. Ooh. A man is not established by wickedness, but what's he established by? The root of righteousness, he cannot be what? Moved. He cannot be what? Moved. Root of righteousness can't be moved. Loves knowledge, loves counsel and instruction. He maintains an area of humility, rejects pride, hates pride, hates the ways of evil. 1 Peter 2. Unshakable generation. Everybody's quiet today. Are you all all right? What's going on? <laughs> Verse 1. First Peter 2, verse 1. Therefore, laying aside all malice, <clears throat> all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. Everyone say, I'm chosen and I'm precious. No matter what the mirror says. Verse 4. Coming to him as a what? Living stone rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, but those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. Verse 9, here we go. But you are a what? A chosen generation, a royal priesthood. A holy nation, his own special people, that you mo may proclaim the praises of of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but now are a people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Beloved, I beg you, sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may be by your good works, which they observe, Glorify God in a day of visitation. Again, we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priest. In other words, we are a generation of worshipers. We are called out of darkness for just as a time as this. A people of the chosen into the unshakable generation of light and truth that pursue their enemies and uphold the counsel of the Lord. They pursue their enemies. Amen. Chosen generation, royal priesthood of worshipers, called out of darkness, a people of 
They are chosen into an unshakable generation of light and truth that pursue the enemies and uphold the counsel of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 4. In verse 7. Second Corinthians 4, verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. We are what? Hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus all may also may be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our what? Mortal bodies. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that what? He who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceedingly an eternal weight of glory, although some people don't think it is a light affliction. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. We are earthen vessels of honor that fear the Lord. We maintain a course and don't change by emotional attacks. We are consistent and alert to what is the unseen and the human aspects. In other words, the unseen and the human eye. See, the human eye can't see the unseen realm. Amen? But the eyes of God can see it all. So we are constant, we are alert to what is the unseen to the human eye, but seen and sensed by the unshakables. Amen? Because we are called the what? Unshakable generation. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Hey, you may get sideswiped, but you still stand. You get up, shake the dust off, remove the road marks. The wheel treads, you know. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 2, verse 1. Unshakables. You therefore, my son, be what? Strong in the plan of God that is in Christ Jesus called grace. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to who? Faithful men. Is a faithful person unshakable? Amen. Who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure. Does a person that's unshakable ability have the ability to endure? Yes. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the emotional affairs of this life. And he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he doesn't, is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of change, but the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect. Why? Because he's an unshakable. That they also may obtain the salvation 
which is in Christ Jesus with the eternal glory. I want you to know that there have been many unshakable individuals, but there's never been a full generation that's unshakable until now. Verse 11. This is a faithful saying, if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Wow. He cannot deny him what? Himself. Listen, these soldiers of the Lord, that's who are the chosen into an unshakable generation, they are living in what we call a certain faith, not an experimental. See, there's a difference. There's a lot of individuals experimenting with faith, but those are those who certain faith. It is certain to them. They are connected. There is no doubt. There's no holding back. They're, they are unshakable to the faith of God, to his promises and to who he is and what he can do. That's why we know that all things are going to work to the good. No matter what. I don't care if you've been side swiped, run over, whatever. Whatever's happened in your life, it's going to work to the good. Amen? If you're unshakable. It didn't mean things would happen. Amen? Just because you're unshakable doesn't mean things are going to happen. You're going to probably be more attacked than most people. Because you're more dangerous to the enemy. Amen? Psalm 62. So you must examine yourself and ask yourself, are you unshakable? Sixty-two and verse one. Let's speak it, please. Truly my soul silently waits for God. For him comes my salvation. He only, everyone say only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. He's an unshakable. How long will you attack a man? You, sh you shall be slain, all of you, like a leaning wall and a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his high position. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. My soul waits silently for God alone. For my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. In other words, my expectation, my fulfillment is from him. Amen. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. What a confession. Amen? Making that confession is vital for me and you. Go to Matthew 25. Oh, happy days. Matthew 25. Verse 1. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to what? Ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. And again, a virgin is someone that's been washed by the blood. Now five of them were wise and five stupid. Oh, foolish. Well, they didn't take instruction, did they? They didn't love it. So five of them were wise. Amen? But the rest were... Anyways, verse 5. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all what? Oh, no, wait a minute. I got to go back. Those who were foolish... That's, now five of them were wise. Five of them were foolish. Verse 3. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no what? Oil with them. In other words, they stopped worshiping. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. 
But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And, the, and at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom's coming. Go out to meet him. Then those who arose, and they trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Let me tell you, you can't give oil to anyone else. You must purchase your own oil by worship. Amen. Verse 11. And, and, and verse 10, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding and the door was what? Shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, I surely, I say, I don't know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. We are here right now. I mean, this is what's happening. This is around the corner. I'm telling you, I can taste it. But right now, there's a process coming. We are in this time. It's not the end of the world. Amen? It's the end of the old and the beginning of a new beginning. We are entering a new world where things are going to be different. But the kingdom doesn't change. The world may change, but the kingdom doesn't change, man. We must maintain fresh oil for the aggressive anointing that's being released in our lives. Psalm 15. Again, we've talked about how the enemy succeeded in separating individuals from assembling and getting in God's presence. Amen. Amen. You must be careful yourself and not to take coming worshiping as a nonchalant thing. You must cross over. You must get the oil. Verse 1, verse uh, Psalm 15. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle and who may dwell in your holy hill or your what? presence. Are you ready? Here's a guideline. This is the guideline of his light and truth right here. He who walks what? Uprightly. Who works what? Righteousness. Who speaks the truth in his own heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who want fear the Lord. He who serves to, he who swears to his own hurt and does not what? Change. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved because he's an untouchable. Amen? Second Corinthians chapter 5. Oh, happy days. Yes. Second Corinthians 5 and verse 1. Hallelujah. Man, is it warm in here or what? Whew. Is this AC on? It's not? Whew. It's cracking in here. I need that fan. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 1, let's grow for it. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God. A house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly. Hello. In the, we groan what? Earnestly. Desiring to be what? Clothed with our habitation which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For if, for we who are in this tent groan being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. See, this is why 
We want to be more clothed. So we want to have more God's presence. And people don't realize that they become miserable without that presence. There's a level of presence that you and I must maintain, that oil. Or we become miserable and you don't even realize it. You're irritated. You're not fulfilled. You're looking for something else to fulfill you. You're looking for something else to do. Amen? It's because of the lack of God's presence. Now your focus is on you instead of him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's grow a little further. <laughs> All right. Verse what? Uh, verse 5. For he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to God. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Psalm 16. In verse 7. Psalm 16, verse 7. Let's speak it. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Let me tell you, an untouchable will always set the Lord before him. Because he's at my right hand, I shall what? Not be moved. See, when other, this is where priority is so important. When other things are before you, it causes problems. You'll walk in an uncertainty. You'll walk what they call blind faith. But that's not God. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also so rest in hope. For you shall not leave my soul in hell, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life, and in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Because I have set the Lord before me, I will not be moved. That's a priority. That's why you seek every morning. You make sure you make connection every morning the Lord is set before you. 1 John chapter 5. Unshakable generation. Now, everybody has a choice. To become a part of the unshakable generation or not. First John 5 verse 18. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. In other words, deliberately sin. <laughs> Doesn't mean you won't make a mistake, Amen. In other words, there's no association with the presence of evil. But he who has been born of God keeps himself. And the wicked one does not touch him. This is an untouchable. Why? Because that individual keeps himself in the position where God is always before him and he hides in the secret place with the Lord. He, his voice is priority. His presence is priority. See, you can't do anything without his presence and his voice. You'll do everything in your own strength and it won't count for nothing. Verse 19. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his Son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Why? Because they'll move you right out of position. I want to close at 1 Corinthians 15.
you know, when you begin to see what the Lord is doing with all this, one of the things that we've talked about already is maintaining an identity. And our identity is from Him. Amen? These individuals that are unshakable maintain the identity, not according to the world says, but according to what God says who they are. And this is just adding to that identity. And when your identity is solid in the Lord, you're unshakable. No matter what's going on. You're willing to do whatever it takes. You're willing to leave whatever it takes. You're willing to drop. Move forward. Never go back. Amen? Look at the uh, disciples when Jesus came. And what did he do? He said, he didn't say, believe me. He said what? Follow me. Follow me. They dropped whatever they were doing. There was something about Jesus that they wanted to know. They began seekers right away. He didn't say, I'm the son of God. He didn't come and introduce himself on anything. He just walked up and said, follow me. Yo, okay. I'm just going to drop everything. I don't know why I'm following this guy. But my heart's being drawn to him. See, there was an inward draw, not a mental draw. Something was going on. They couldn't understand it. They couldn't figure it out. They wanted to know more. I mean, what could make me just leave my family and everything? They had, they had businesses, family, kids, everything. And they just left them all. In fact, when they were, some of them being crucified, because they wouldn't deny Christ, they said, don't crucify me like Jesus. Crucify me upside down. These men were unshakable. There were men and women that were unshakable at that time. But now God is raising up a complete generation that is unshakable. And we're a part of it. We're called to it. We're chosen in it. It's an honor and a blessing. Look outside of the world of what's going on out there. They're lost and deceived. Far be it that we should take advantage of this call. Does everybody understand? Mis and misdirected or, or just call it a common thing. It's not. It's an honor and a blessing. And we need to stop treating this call like a common thing. Amen? 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. Let's speak it. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery, mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be what? Steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Powerful. What a time and season that we are in. The generation, the return of the Lord, the untouchables, <laughs> the unshakables. Amen? Praise God. Keep your Holy Ghost bazooka drawn all the time, man. You know? Get ready to blow some things out that need to be blown out. Don't take no garbage from no demon. Praise God. We're warriors. We're more than conquerors. He was in us as greater news in the world. And we can do all things through the anointing of Christ Jesus. Steadfast, immovable, moving forward. Don't look back. What is behind you does not matter. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I ask that you seal this word into each and every one of us through the blood and through the anointing and allow it to penetrate every part of our being and bring to remembrance of who we are in you and the generation that we're a part of for your glory, for your honor, and for your praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Prepare your hearts for communion.